Hi, I'm Zach Weaver, creative technologist at Building 61, the Boulder Library Makerspace. This is the MIG welding tool orientation. MIG welding is the fastest, easiest way to weld. At Building 61, MIG welding requires a short, hands-on training in combination with this video orientation. The schedule for this and all events can be found on the event calendar at building61.org. Let's get started. MIG stands for metal inert gas. The same process might be referred to as gas metal arc welding or GMAW. Golly gee, Ma, why so hard on the David? I don't know, rainbow beard? We'll refer to it as MIG. The metal in MIG refers to a spool of fine wire which is mechanically fed through the end of a torch. This is not a flame torch or a British flashlight. It's an electrical handheld tool that does three important things when you pull the trigger on the handle. First, it feeds the metal wire from a spool out of the tip of the torch. This metal becomes the filling material and attaches, or welds, two or more pieces of stock material. The type of wire, or metal alloy, will be the same as your base material. In our case, steel. Second, the torch conducts electrical current through the wire. It is the positive charge of an electrical circuit. When that positive charge comes in contact with a negatively charged surface, it produces an electrical arc with enough heat to melt the stock material and the wire together. The third function of the torch relates to the IG in MIG. It provides a flow of inert gas around the site of the weld. The purpose of this gas is to remove any impurities in the air around the weld, making it as as clean and as strong as possible. MIG welders use just three settings which you'll adjust every time you weld. The first is gas pressure. First, we need to open the gas flow with the main valve. You should see the gauge marked tank pressure go anywhere from 100 to 1500 PSI. Next, we set the line pressure, the gas that flows from the torch while welding. We adjust the line pressure by turning the knob between the two gauges while pulling the trigger on the torch. We want to set that to 10 to 15 cubic liters per minute. It's important not to breathe this gas in. It isn't poisonous, but it's heavier than air. So if inhaled, it could effectively suffocate someone. Keep this in mind at all times. The two remaining variables are balanced with each other. They are set based on the stock material's thickness or gauge. The wire feed rate dial changes the speed of wire moving out of the torch. The power level dial effectively controls the amount of heat generated by the electrical arc by increasing or decreasing voltage. Now generally, when the heat is higher, you need a faster wire feed rate. When it's lower, you can use a lower feed rate. We'll go over this thoroughly at your in-person orientation. That covers the torch. There's one last critical component to the machine setup, the ground wire. The ground wire completes an electrical circuit with the welding wire, producing the arc, which makes the heat to weld. The wire is fixed to a clamp. This clamp needs to be secured on a clean area of your stock material or another conductive surface that your stock material is sitting on. The ground wire clamp may also need to move closer to the site of a weld if you aren't getting a good steady arc. When your material is painted or coated in some other way, it is important to clean it down to bare metal. Whenever welding, it's always handy to have an electric grinding tool or steel brush. Occasionally, we need to clean grease or oil off stock material, even when it's brand new. Welds will only reach full strength if we work with rust-free, clean, bare metal. At Building 61, safety is first, third, and fourth priority. The second is coffee. Weren't you doing a video? Oh, sh
Welding can lead to all kinds of injury if done without the proper safety gear, all of which you may supply yourself, but we also have all of the welding specific gear. It's important that you dress for success. When you come to Building 61 to weld or anywhere, you need to be dressed and clothed with organic fibers. The easiest way to explain that is wear cotton clothing, like blue jeans and cotton shirts. Do not wear spandex, rayon, polyester, etc. You need to wear full length pants and you need to wear closed toed shoes. They should be made of leather if you have a choice. And keep this in mind, whatever you wear is going to get hit with sparks from grinding and welding. It will get small burns in it. Welding is super fun and part of that fun is it's super dirty work. Building 61 will provide some really cool gear, including an apron, welding jacket, gloves, and the coolest thing about welding, the auto dark helmet. Auto dark helmets use sensors to instantaneously turn a more or less clear lens into a shaded lens dark enough to protect your eyes from the intense ultraviolet light emitted by a welding arc, but allowing you to see your weld. Your eyes are the most vulnerable part of your body around welding. If you are welding or if you are in the vicinity of someone else welding, never look directly at the arc. Any part of your body exposed to the light created while MIG welding can be burned, similar to a bad sunburn. So, even if it's really warm, you gotta stay covered up. Now that we've covered safety, let's get ready to go. I've prepared some stock material for a simple butt weld. A butt weld isn't when you accidentally weld your friend from your pocket. It's when two pieces of stock material are aligned on a flat edge. Before we weld that edge, we need to change the settings based on the material thickness. To use this chart, we need to know our gas mixture, our wire thickness, and the thickness of the metal referred to as the gauge. Unless otherwise stated, Building 61 will use a 7525 argon CO2 gas mixture, an 035 wire. So to weld my stock material of 12 gauge steel, we'll set the wire feed to three and a half and the power to position H, which I'm assuming stands for hot as heck. Typically, we'll adjust these settings as we go based on the observed results. Before every weld, it's best to trim the wire back just outside the tip of the torch. We can also inspect and clear any debris from the nozzle. This will build up in the normal course of welding and can block the flow of gas. My material is grounded, the torch is ready. I'm gonna drop the helmet and do a quick test weld. I'll position myself to hold the torch about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters away from where I want to start welding. When I'm ready, I want to loudly say, Welding! to alert anyone near me not to look at the torch. After securing the material with two small tack welds, I'll start my final weld by moving the torch forward and in small circles welding. like a loop-de-loop. -loop. Then, I'll adjust my settings until I see the desired result. This is the art of welding. There's no substitute for experience when it comes to learning how to move at what speed and at what distance from your material. Expert welders have literally thousands of hours under the hood, as they say. So be patient. We'll work with you over time so that one day, through observation and practice, you'll just get it. And finally, with everything dialed in, I'm ready to finish my weld. This looks pretty good. Thanks for watching. Now you're ready to sign up for the MIG welding tool orientation at Building 61. To get there, go to building61.org, click on the calendar link, and register for the next convenient time slot. If it's your first time, we'll review all of the content we've covered here and start with a nice, easy practice project. You'll be welding in no time. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's perfect. We now can bleep. Change your water. <laughs> we can bleep out the.